What's up y'all? It's Matt with Family Tradition Farms. Hey, we're down here in the shop. It is a balmy 20 degrees outside. Uh, not real enjoyable to do any work outside, but that's not a problem because we have plenty of things to do in the shop. We still have corn sitting in the bins and I still don't have a way to get it out yet. So we're working on that today. Let me show you what we've got planned and then we're going to get right into it. All right, just to give a quick explanation of how we do unload grain from the bins uh, we start with this motor here which is mounted outside of the bin on what we call the sump uh, that belt runs off that pulley which then runs a bigger pulley which pulls grain out from underneath the bottom of the bin there's a auger that pulls all the way out to the outside well inside the bin we have to have a way to get the corn from the outside rings to the center where the sump is, which is where this motor comes into place. This motor runs the sweep auger, which I'll show you guys here in just a bit. But unfortunately, we've got the wrong plug on it. Uh, that guy's not gonna work. And also, this motor is far more powerful than that motor. So the problem comes is, as the sweep auger is pulling corn from the outside into the middle of the sump, uh, it could quite possibly clog the sump auger. So we are going to wire in a switch so that we can shut power off and shut it back, turn it back on while we are in the bin uh, running the sweep auger. Let me show you where the sweep auger is and then we're gonna start taking this guy apart. So here is the sweep auger. The motor that we're working on today mounts right on top of that red plate and the belt runs around that larger pulley there. That small wheel out on the edge there, it runs along the edge of the bin and then as it runs, the auger pulls the grain into the center where the sump is and then the sump that runs underneath the bin drags it all the way out. So as this auger is pulling grain in, it's quite possible that it's gonna pull it in quicker than the sump can take it out, which is why we wanna have a switch located inside the bin pretty close to the motor so we can turn it on and off as it fills up. All right, first thing we need to do is figure out where we want to install our weatherproof box, which is going to house a switch that allows us to turn this on and off. Um, we're gonna cut the wire and basically put that through the box, wire it into a switch inside the box. That way we can flip it on and off as the sump gets full. Uh, this little seal here makes it water and dust proof. That way we don't get dust inside and uh, have a potential fire. So we're just gonna kind of string this cord out here, figure out about where we want it, where it's close enough to the motor that it's not, that we can get to it, but it's also not gonna be getting into the, uh, into the auger as it's running. probably gonna just go about right in here. It doesn't really matter. It's just kind of a, a preference thing of, of where it's gonna work the best. And I think that's, I, I think that'll work pretty good. Let's just go ahead and cut it. Sometimes you just gotta send it and uh, deal with the consequences afterwards. Okay, so we've got that cut now. As you can see, this little seal here, it's, it's just worn out beyond use. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take it off. I bought some new ones. We'll get it fed down through here and uh, replace that little seal. That way we don't have any more problems there. Well, I don't like what I see there. Um, I see wire exposed. That's not good. So let's take that cover off and see what we're working with. I think that's just the ground, but I don't know why it's not hooked up. 
Should be. Interesting. Okay, well, I've got the cord threaded back out. Um, that way I can put this new ceiling nut in here. Uh, for some reason, whoever had this motor before me decided they just didn't want to hook up the ground. So all we got to do is just peel that off a little bit, tie it into that little green screw right there, and uh, that'll that'll make it a little <laughs> a little bit more safer. So uh, let's go ahead and get that tied on there. That's hooked up and just so everyone's aware i am nowhere near an electrician but i've got a buddy who is so periodically throughout this video i'm sending him pictures he's telling me what i need to do and i'm actually doing it sending it back making sure i got it right so shout out to my buddy john because i wouldn't have any idea how to do this without him thanks john okay that is sealed up good and tight now we're gonna go and put this cover back on Shouldn't need to get into there anymore. And then we'll start putting our box together. All right, so we've got the little box where the wire goes in. It's now taken care of, um, sealed up good and tight. The other end of the cord now here is where we're gonna run it into the box and put the switch on it. That way we can shut the motor on and off as we're in the bin cleaning it out. So I'm just gonna put the phone down, guys. It's really not very exciting to watch me put screws in and strip wires back. And I'll just catch back up with you when I have it put together. All right. I had to send way too many pictures to my buddy John so I could figure out what I was doing. Had some things backwards. He walked me through, got them straightened out. Uh, let me show you the correct way to wire in a switch on a 220 volt uh, motor here. So here we go. We got the big 220 um, plug wired up, good to go. This top one is the ground and then these other two um, are my white and black wires. The green is the ground. All we've done is connect the two wires together so that the motor grounds to the outlet. And as far as the other wires go, one wire, well, the big wire here has two smaller wires inside of it. They're both going to go to this side of the wire. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference on which one goes where as long as you keep them the same. And then the other one coming in from this way uh, I went ahead and put to this side of the wire again doesn't matter a whole lot as long as it's kept the same so all we have left to do is screw this down put this waterproof dust tight plate on it and then we should be good to go to plug it in and give it a shot okay we uh, we got the cover back on had to pop out some little pieces on the seal that way the screws and everything went back on correctly it is in the off position right now, should be, flip it to, flick it to on, off, um, this just adds a dust tight seal, keep all my connections from getting corn dust and such in them. Um, so theoretically, should be able to plug that guy in and it not work, and then when I flip that on, it should start working. So I guess we're going to try it, that's about all we can do. Okay, plugged in, nothing exploded, well, that's always a plus. We're just going to hit this and kick it back off real quick, make sure it works. 
By God, she works. Sweet. So that's going to do it for this quick video, guys. Again, I'm not an electrician by any means, but I've got a real good buddy who is, and he helped me through step by step on how to do this. If you're going to try something like this, make sure you ask somebody that knows what they're doing. Don't just take my word for it because I probably didn't explain it to where anybody can understand what I was doing. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. The next video, we should get these motors mounted to the bin and we'll start unloading some corn. Thanks, and you guys have a good one.